So as you can see, we're out on the job site today, and the boss has asked us to work out what level the ground is all the way around this job that we're currently building. So in order to compare these heights, we have to have a point on our job site that we actually know the height of, or it has a designated height. And that's referred to as the job datum. This is the mark for a datum. Realistically, it'll probably just be a nail or a mark on the curb or something else that's not going to move um, too often. Uh, and that'll be designated as your job datum and marked on the plans as such. Now, uh, this could actually just be given a nominal height. It's normally a positive, like 10 metres, 20 metres or 100 metres. That allows for um, readings to be taken below it without going into the negative numbers. Or it could have an actual level above sea level, or height above sea level. If it's given a height above sea level, then you need to get a registered surveyor to come in. What they'll do is they'll have a look around the um, subdivision and they'll be looking for a survey mark or an Australian height datum, which looks a bit like this. Okay, it's got a number on it, and the um, registered surveyors they can get onto the spatial information system. They can look up the position of this mark and they can find out the longitude and latitude of it and the um, the height above sea level. And once they know the height above sea level of this mark, they can then transfer that down the road to our datum. Uh, however, in this case, I haven't done that. I've just given this a nominal height of 10 metres. So it's just um, something to work from, something to compare the other levels to. So we can then set up our instrument and get ready to start taking our levels. We also need to set up our level book. So this is what they call a rise and fall level book. There is also a height of climation level book. Um, however, the process of filling them out and recording the readings uh, is the same. So I'll show you how to fill out this one. It's the same for height of climation. And later on in another video, I'll then show you how to calculate the rise and fall method and the height of collimation method. So with the level book, the first thing you need to fill out is the information. So the site that you're, you're on, just in case it goes off the site. The height of the datum, which you know is 10 metres. This is going to be a closed survey. So we're going to go from the datum right around the house and back to the datum. And it's done on the 23rd of July 2003. So, great. Let's um, change that back to a date, shall we? There we go. So we know when uh, the actual survey was taken. So that's our sheet ready to go. So now we can go back to the instrument. And instrument set up, we get our offside. Oh, sorry, the first other thing we need to do is go around and number where we're going to take our reading. So, in this case, we're just going to do it at the bottom of each pier. Yes, and I haven't got the end caps or the DPC in. Right, the object of this exercise, we don't need it. So, I've numbered all the piers, and our offside is ready to go. When we know all the numbers of our positions, we can actually go back here and put those in our sheet. So we're going to start at the datum. Then we're going to go position 1, 2, 3, 10, 11. There's 17 positions. And then we do the last one back at the datum. So that's where we're going to take all our readings. Okay, let's start taking some readings. So we're all set up. Old mate's here with the staff. I'm going to look through the instrument. It's my simulation looking through the instrument. Take a reading. So 23, 2350, 2390, about 2395. So we go back to our level book. And because this is the first site that we've taken and it goes back to a known point, we're going to write it in the back site column. And we're taking it from the datum, so 20.395. It goes in there. Then we go back to our level, get our offside of the staff to move, 
the instrument here doesn't move, it just rotates around. Take our next reading. And this one's going to be 2 metres and 50. So, to our level book. 2 metres and 50. This is an intermediate site, and it's taken from position 1. So the first reading is always a back site. Everything else is intermediate, and then we accept for the last one that we take, which is a foresight. So the rest are going to go in the middle here. So position 1, intermediate site in that position there. Right. So then we go get our mate to move to position 2, take our reading, and we look at 1950, 60, 70. So back to our level book. One point, well, point nine seven zero. And this is going to continue. We move, we take a reading, we put it in the level book. This is one point eight eight eight. Right, move, take a reading, put it in the level book, 1.808. I'll make moves, take a reading, put it in the level book, 1.722. So there's a bit of a process here because there's quite a few readings to do. Point six six four. Lucky I took all these readings before. I can just write them straight in. Sorry, oh, it should be six oh nine. This one is one point five three four. Okay, so now we're up to the interesting part because this next reading is going to be the last reading that we can see from this position. So it's going to be what we call a forward site because we're taking this reading looking forward to moving around the corner. So this will be a foresight. So the reading's the same. Take the reading, go back to our level book, and this time it goes into the foresight column. So 1.493. Okay, so that's our first section done. Now what has to happen is the guy here with the staff, he stays where he is, and our tripod and instrument moves. Our mate's still over here hiding behind the corner. Okay, he's going to move around, but the instrument's going to stay essentially in the same spot. Oh, sorry, the level's going to stay in the same spot. Instrument's moved, and then we're going to take a reading back to that staff again. Okay, now what we do with that reading, it's a back sight because from this new position, it's going back to a known point. So we put our reading back in our backside column. And it's worth throwing over in our remarks column that that's a change point. Pretty obvious because it's going to be the only spot with two readings on the line, but we can throw that in our marginal information or our remarks column. Okay, so then the process is the same. We go back to our staff, and our mate moves up one. We take a reading, and we record that back now in our intermediate column. Again, 
quickly move. Take the reading through the instrument. Very important when you're doing this to make sure that you are taking accurate readings and that you are recording the numbers accurately because if you don't, when you go to actually check the uh, calculations on your, on your level book and you get it wrong, it's going to mean that you need to go back out to the job site and do the survey again which is not going to be good for uh, for anyone. Okay, let me just check. I'm running out of... So we're on this point 14. So what should be... Yep, we're up to point 14, so I haven't lost track. 2.052. Oh, should be a point. Start talking about accuracy and start getting unaccurate yourself. So we keep moving around, taking our readings. Three. Couple more to go. Oh. So we're on to our last point here. Take that reading. 2.289. And then the last point, as I said, is going to be our datum. So we go back over to the datum. Take a reading on it. And it's our last reading on the datum, so it goes in our foresight column, and it's a 2.634. So there we go. Sorry, that should be a point. We've taken all our levels. Uh, we've recorded everything in our level book, ready to do the calculations, which I'll show you in the next video. And we're done. All our levels are recorded. So that's the process of recording the levels and as I said in the next video I'll show you how to calculate them and actually work out what the difference is between these points that we've just taken.